from London, England, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Discover 2015. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in London, England for HPE Discover. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from noises. Day two wrap up. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Dave, six years now covering HP Discover. Now it's HPE Discover with the split is in place. We just had Antonio Neri on all the top executives. Aruba Wireless kicking some butt. You got the Edge thing with the IoT. Just, I mean, just a lot of good stuff happening from HP's product standpoint. They got the right vision. They got the right attitude. They're now sh shackle free from the HP noise around the whole HP controversy. I mean, it went way back, back in the day. We, when we were covering it, we had Leo Apotheker, well, Mark Hurd, Leo Apotheker, now Meg Whitman, the turnaround, longer than expected, the split, just, and then finally, it's done. Hey, <laughs> we are at the point now where really everything's out. No, no one can, Meg Whitman and team cannot hide. They are out on their own with what was same product strategy pretty much they had years ago under ESSN, but bigger now, company-wide under EG. Um, you can see a lot of energy in the, in the eyes of the people, the eye of the tiger. People have the spring in their step. You can see the focus, and you're pointing out some data that you're kind of hearing about the balance sheet. They're poised, and I think they want to make a statement. I mean, I feel like HP wants to make a statement. Here's what I think. I've been thinking about, like, you know, we love sports analogies. To me, it's HP's been doing the rope-a-dope for seven rounds, and now it's like Ali coming off in the round seven, <laughs> right? They have right? He's lean, he's got energy. The, 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 the split makes things so much cleaner. HP was this, HPQ was this muddled mess. It was like whack-a-mole. One yeah. thing would go well, another yeah. thing would go bad. PCs were up, EDS is down, blah, blah, blah. Now it's clean. It's very clear what HP has to do, yeah. right? They stabilize you know, the core businesses. They, they, fix, they, gotta, they gotta work on EDS, no yeah. question about it, that outsourcing business, but it's very clear what they have to do there and then keep innovating, yeah. grow top line revenue in constant currency, get operating profits up. I do think they can beat 10%, I really do, and really start driving that innovation and yeah. I think they're going to well, be dangerous. You know, I made the prediction years ago they should keep um, it together and I actually, you know, see things change and, and my take on that is, is that, you know, it's not what I had predicted or thought they should do at the time, but here's what happened, Dave. Well, but at the time, you felt like there was still a device play for them. No, 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 here's, what, here, by here's why um, things have changed. One, the institutional knowledge of HP is important, and a lot of people were moving out and in and out of the company. The Apotheker, Meg Whitman transition caused a lot of turnover at the executive ranks. Meg brought a team in, locked in the strategy, and it was unattainable to have that PC thing, and it's cleaner to break at that point. If you don't have the institutional knowledge of, of, the, of the supply chain, the business, it doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. keep it separate, be highly cohesive, decouple, and highly cohesive entities is a good move at this point. Um, but I think this group here knows the data center. In 2011, we talk about Gen 8, and then the next year, Moonshot. A lot of the strategies are playing out beautifully from years ago, and on top of it, you got the DevOps, angle, the composable with Synergy, and you got IOT right around the corner, and we heard from Antonio Neri about the wireless campus refresh, which I didn't even look at that. That's a pretty big deal when you think about the wireless implications. So I think HP is very poised right now, and they got a lot more meat on the bone than I had well, thought so, they would have so on this show. They hang tough in servers where they're, they're, they're the leader. You've now got this Synergy, which I really do think is, is pretty innovative, and if, they, if it is what we think it might be, that's pretty solid. Storage right now is flat. I like to see some growth in storage. You know, that's been, the EVA drag has been hurting this company for a while. Storage is a flat, three par has been great, but not enough to offset the decline. So really like to see some growth in storage. If they can start growing in storage, you, you mentioned the networking piece, and if they can shore up that sort of nasty, gnarly outsourcing business, and very importantly, grow the mix towards software. Software declining, you know, flat, that's not good. Right, software's yeah. a growing business. So there's got to be, if, if I were Meg, Vice to Meg, I would be making tuck-in acquisitions around software, security, they, they jettisoned the tipping point yeah. security business, which I think is a great move. They sold that to Trend Micro. So now start building up again from a position of strength. That to me is what HPE does. They're throwing off cash. They're going to throw off more cash. And I think, it's, frankly, it's going to come down yeah. to execution, 
their M&A team, and their ability to continue to innovate. HPE is a cash machine. They are going to produce a lot of cash, and they're doing well right now on the performance side on the business. The Synergy thing, the Apollo, the IoT, the networking thing is going to be something. I think that they should put all the networking under Aruba. And I think that should move, that should happen sooner than later. I think well, it's interesting, that is a little confusing right now. Dom's title is president, right? Antonio is running networking, I think, right? Still. Remember I asked Pat Gelsinger at uh, VMworld, does the infrastructure dictate the applications? And then he says, yeah. And actually DevOps actually flips it around. The applications are dictating infrastructure, that's DevOps. The same thing's happening in networking. The core of the network used to dictate to the edge kind of what it would look like. And I think now you're seeing the exact opposite. The wireless piece is dictating what's going to happen at the core. So HP networking is in transition in my mind. That's an area that they got to look at and say, hey, you know, we need to clean this up in terms of positioning and, 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 and what, what the messaging is because it's a solid technology base with HP networking. They have the 3Com acquisition. Now they got Aruba with good management team. So I think what I would do is I'd bolt that all into one group and just run the table on networking and, so, and fix, figure out SDN. And so, so you said something, you said HPE is a cash flow machine. It's not yet, but it has the potential to be a cash flow machine. It's very, very important in my view. And this, to, frankly, is why EMC couldn't survive as an independent company. Its cash, its free cash flow was declining and it was very clear which direction it was going and the weight of Wall Street pressure, they couldn't handle it. To the extent that HP, and I think they can, I mean, they threw off a billion dollars roughly in free cash flow if you split the companies this year, which was about a third of the total combined companies. I think HP can double that and continue to double that, which you know, gets them- And they, they have no, ultimately no debt. And their debt has disappeared right, overnight because <laughs> of this beautiful financial engineering that they did. And the HP Inc. can pay off the debt because it's, it is the cash flow yeah. machine. So now, HPE you know, can be a growth engine if they can get that right, and as yeah. I say, get the mix right. It's certainly I mean, HP, it's, it's HPE, it's, its margins are like single digits, it's operating profit. And so, but it's software operating profit is 30%. If it can shift the mix towards software, it's a very dangerous company. I've said this about Dell as well. You know, Dell is in a sort it's of- It's tough to be in the software business when you're a box guy, now transforming into solutions. I mean, Manish Goyal well, said it right, there's technology vectors and the consumption vectors, it, so. It is tough, it, it is tough, but, but I think that you can sell software with hardware, which is traditionally what they've done. They've got a big data play in software. And so, I, I put it this way, they don't need to like triple their software margins. They just need to increase the, per, the percentage of business so that comes from software. I got to ask you, Dave, as the analyst, and also someone who's uh, been co-hosting the Cube with me for six years. Uh, we know Michael Dell pretty well from in getting to know him on the Cube. What do you think he's doing right now? Because he, he's always looked at IHP as a target. If he's got the acquisition, he's got to move fast. I mean. He's got the big EMC, you know, his toy is EMC, <laughs> RSA, all that stuff, and HP, has got Memster and uh, the machine. Well, So what do you do so if you're he, Dell? Here's my feeling about Are you stuck Michael with Dell. the transaction you got now? Are you moving? I don't think he's stuck at all. I mean, I, think, I don't think he thinks he's stuck. I think he wants to move forward. I think about Michael Dell. Michael Dell beat Carl Icahn, <laughs> Who beats Carl Icahn? I mean, really, the great icon. Michael Dell won. So Michael Dell's a winner. Yeah, I don't think he's going to But he's got to close the deal, Dave. My he prediction is close he will. The deal. I mean, I, I could be wrong, but I think he's going to do whatever it takes. You hear rumors now, he's going to be spinning right. off Quest, maybe some other you know, security assets. You know, add it up, it's roughly about four billion, kind of that yeah. shortfall. Yeah, he's got IRS pressures. He's going to do whatever it takes, in my opinion, because Michael Dell, he's an entrepreneur, he believes in the vision, and I think actually it's, it's, it's a good thing. It's like yeah. I was saying to Antonio, I think you can, off camera, I think you can win with different strategies, I guess it was on camera, different strategies. You, Oracle can win with its strategy, it's not a yeah. zero-sum game. Michael Dell can win with his strategy, cool. HP can win with its strategy, it's a big market. Well, you hear the, with, the, with Amazon, you hear the, you hear the management team at HP using words like, we want to win. Yeah. I mean, that's guns blaring. I mean, so, in a fight. you know, I, yeah. love, I right. love this business they're right now. They're in the now. tournament. I love right? this, they're in the game. Whereas, they're in the last game. couple of years, it's been, oh, we got to fix this, we got to clean this up, and uh, it's just so much stuff to deal with. All right, so day two summary, Dave. What do you, what do you think's going on with, with, the, with the deal heel? We heard Scality mention, kind of tease, they should buy Scality in the storage. We heard storage is growing and winning. Their strategy with single architecture looking really good. And it's really not growing. Right now, storage is flat, which is a bit of a concern, but they're, their contention is storage is flat, but the rest of the industry is shrinking. Okay, that's that's a small the, consolation when Amazon's growing at 80% a year and it's a billion dollar company. So the, you got to ding them there. Three parts doing great, but there's still, it's, this comes from years and years and years of no R&D spigot. Right? That's why they had to buy three par. Right? And a huge install base transition going on. Big thing for storage, John, is they got to do more in their own install base. 
it should be a no-brainer. When you worked at HP, what percent of its, you know, they had 10 percent, 10, 10, 11 percent R and D uh, revenue. No, but, but it's in terms of its attach rate. In other words, when you bought an HP server, you'd buy HP storage. Yeah. The attach rate was very high. And printers, it's, and you buy everything. It's very small today. I mean, that's huge yeah. upside. That that's job number one. Just do that, and you, you're going to be really, you know, crush it. And I think they can do more in terms of gaining share. We heard about some other programs that they have. So, but I'd like to see more out of that storage business. A lot of energy here, a lot of uh, eye of the tiger from the employees, but you know, customers are talking some stuff. Not enough customers on theCUBE, we got to get more customers next time. But I think HP will do M&A, that came out of theCUBE. Uh, Antonio oh, Neri's no great. Oh, I they are doing M&A, right? I mean, you've seen, you know, you saw them actually sell some assets, the you know, tipping point I mentioned. And you saw the Aruba Well, they're definitely going to buy, Dave. You're I very mean, high on the Aruba acquisition. They, they have to I buy. I am very high on the Aruba. Absolutely agree. After, <laughs> I'm very high on the Aruba acquisition. They're, that's going to be a strategic <laughs> asset. Not from a revenue standpoint, <laughs> from the incremental <laughs> value for HP. But let me ask you a question. So, we followed 3Com, you know, when, when Donatel used to talk about 3Com all the time. We're, the, we're, we're a strong alternative to the leader. But it was basically, you know, not the core, not the high end, around the edges, a little cheaper, yeah. second, second, second choice. How does Aruba change that game? Aruba changed the game big time, and, and, and Antonio answered the question interesting. He goes to the, you know, kind of camouflaged answer, which is, oh, the revenue is $15 billion campus market, he goes right to the, the TAM. When in reality, the, the purchase price for wireless equipment is small on these RFPs. I mean, Levi State, even these large campus deals, that's pale in comparison to the value that can bring HP. So yeah, 15, you know, an RFP, a couple million bucks here and there, but it's not more than what selling. What do you say, a, it's a little foot in the, foot in the door? Well, well, when you do it, when you spend, when you buy access points and oh, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. connect it to wireless, there's more in professional services than actual gear. My point is the product uh -huh. uh, sales numbers are not as big. Where the value with Aruba is, they own the edge of the network, okay? And with that, they get access method information, phone information, you know, application delivery, value to the routing information for software defined, a ton of big data opportunity value. So to me, I think it's a real strategic asset, and because it's best in class wireless, huge advantage right now. I would double down on Aruba all the way right now and just go hard, because you'll win on other sides of that, so you talk about attach rates. <laughs> you attach right. with Aruba, you can bring a lot of value in on this converged infrastructure to ultimately cloud. So, so I just think huge strategic advantage right there and a differentiator. So that's the other thing, the services business has been under pressure and there's, there's, there's good news and bad news there. The good news is they're not relying on services and, and so there's upside there, but you know, like IBM, they got to clean up that outsourcing. It's a very difficult business. So. Some work to be done there, but I think it's all doable. And it's very clear now what they have to do, so. <laughs> yeah, they're out on the track. They're going to be, the race is on. They're making progress, you know, Look, long they, Meg's five year plan. They can't we hide. Wish, we wish it were going faster, but no, now it's going to start to move. I think yeah, you're going to start to I see I think this is go. the point where it's happening. Because they can't hide, there's no other excuse. You can't do anything else. Yeah. You've got to perform or, or not, right? They kind of lost a year with, that, with the breakup. The split the gave split. her some time. Yeah. I mean, the split was a brilliant move by Meg Whitman. One, make the pivot right there, just cut the, cut the line, split them up, highly cohesive, decoupled, yeah. but also buys time with the analysts, yep. buys time with everybody else, they do the financial engineering, but now, okay, the race Excuses is on. people a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down. What's under this show? <laughs> I don't want to say shell game, but you know, it does put a you know, pause on oh, the man, analysts. Hey, it you is know? a bit of a shell game. They were moving stuff around. Yeah, hey, hey, wait, give me some more time. I need another year. Game. Yeah. So, HP Day 2 wrapping up here. Here's the cube bringing you the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Go to siliconangle.tv. We have podcasting every week. We do Guest of the Week. And every Wednesday, we do a podcast with our female women in tech, lady in tech interview. And of course, go to crowdchat.net slash HPE Discover for all the conversation. Go to crowdpages.co slash HPE Discover. That's our new crowd page. And check out the Influencer Social Network. That's ranked by this event. It's a persona-based network with a search engine. That's new from us. Take a look at that. Of course, go to youtube.com slash siliconangle for all the videos on demand. And siliconangle.com and wikibon.com. New for cloud all the research action. up there. New cloud this research on wikibon.com. Uh, check it all stuff. out. Thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow for day three of wall-to-wall -wall coverage from London, England's theCUBE.